Hey, Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because Because the the drinks drinks are are on us. us. (laughs) Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose, and we are back for yet another episode of Drinks on Us. We're so excited to hang out with you guys. Um, I feel like we are slowly but surely getting our footing and figuring this thing out. It doesn't take us eight hours before we get to actually start filming (laughs) the technical (laughs) side. Um, But we are so excited today. Today, you guys, we are... We're going to get into open the gates, the floodgates (laughs) of... (laughs) so sharp. Um, we asked you guys on our Instagram, uh, full Q and a, and oh my, did we get a lot of questions, a lot of juicy questions. So buckle up. This episode is going to be juicy to say the least. We're going to spill all the tea. Um, so I'm really excited (laughs) to get into it and we definitely, um, are needing some drinks tonight to get through it. So Rye, what's in your cup tonight? Okay, so tonight I am drinking an Aperol Spritz, and I just felt it was needed for this episode. The classic, I love a good Aperol. I feel like I love a lot of Aperol in my Spritz, but some people only like a dash. So that's my Aperol with extra Aperol. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm heavy Aperol as well. Heavy Aperol. What's in your cup? I am having the same. So cheers from afar. I really feel like we are hanging out together, Cheers. having our Aperol spritz. And I also agree. I am so heavy on the Aperol. I just feel like it makes it, I don't know. It are we really going to a restaurant? Is there anything worse? No, no. <laughs> I feel like the Aperol makes the drink. I'm for sure. You. Um, Actually, I think this would be a perfect thing for us to film on our happy hour club. Um, I know Aperol has some love and some hate, but we're going to make a recipe. Um, It's very, very simple, but we'll put that up on our next episode of happy hour club and share that with you guys. So if you're interested and want to try it out for a next episode that you listen to drinks on us, um, we'll do that for you guys. I hope you guys are loving the happy hour club series. We're just kicking it off and I'm really excited about it. Um, if you guys missed it or didn't catch the last episode, we are doing a weekly segment on our Instagram where we make our favorite mocktails and cocktails. So you guys have them. You can store them in your back pocket for your next happy hour girls night, or just the next time you're listening to drinks on us. So we're really excited about that. Yay. I'm going to take a sip. Okay. Yay. So tell me about you. What have you been up to this week? What's new? (laughs) I feel like I haven't talked to you actually in a while. I know you guys, sometimes Riley and I have to be like, okay, let's just save that. So we have something to discuss at the (laughs) beginning because we can't know every aspect of every part of our lives every second. There's two things I wanted to update you guys on. Um, Obviously update you Riley, but I feel like I talked about it on the pod. So it'd be a good thing to share. First up is Pilates. I have been going to Pilates and Yay. oh my gosh, I loved it. I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, I thought I would love it, but I just am like a person who likes to move around when I'm working out. And so that's why I'm not like a huge cycle girl. So I didn't know if it would feel the same. Like I liked Pier Bar, wasn't obsessed. So I just wasn't sure like what the vibe would be. And I loved it. It reminded me so much of dance, but I also felt so so much like was working. It wasn't like mild. It was very intense. Like I felt like I was getting a really, really good full body workout. I think you would love it. Were you on the reformer? Yes. So I'm still getting my bearings on it because I've never been on it. And I will be honest. Yeah, it is. It's overwhelming, but I had to take an orientation class first and they taught us like all the terms and how to use it, which I think helped me feel like not like an idiot moving around the (laughs) class, like watching what everyone's doing. But um, I'm trying to find a way to incorporate it into my routine. Um, cause I really want to, it's just actually really expensive. Pilates is yeah. no joke. Were you so sore after you took the class? Yes. Especially my calves calves. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why. So we did an, a calf raise exercise and you have to change the resistance. I may be saying that wrong. If you're like a diehard Pilates, don't come for me, <laughs> but we had to like pulse and the resistance on it was so strong. And she was like, don't stop. And there was a timer going. I'm like, okay, okay. I promise I'll keep going. But I knew in that moment I was going to be so sore. And I 
being sore in your calves is a different type of sore. It has to be the worst thing ever. Like, cause you can't walk without being in pain. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's intense, but I definitely felt like I was in my rich bitch era when I was there. (laughs) Like everything was so prim and proper. I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to get new cute workout outfits to belong here. I love that. So are you going to go back? (laughs) For sure. Um, I'm in my six for 60 session, like my intro session. And then I just have to figure out how I can afford and fit it into my routine. Cause I definitely want to do it on top of like weightlifting and walking. Cause I like a variety. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it'll be nice on like low impact and not feeling like I have to put my body through like hard jumping all the time. I don't know. Sometimes I just don't want to do that. (laughs) No, I love that for you. I think that you will start to love it. I love solid core, but there's not one by my house. So it's always like a treat when I get to go, but I am always so sore afterwards because it's just, you're like fatiguing these muscles that I feel like you don't usually use, you know? Mm -hmm. Is there one in Pittsburgh at all? It's just in the city. Yes. It's just like an hour away from me. (laughs) Like that's just not feasible. Right. Which is sad, but yeah, I do love Pilates. I feel like you, I feel like you don't have a lot of the popular chain ones within like a reasonable driving distance. No, we, I don't even have F45 near me. So that's crazy. Yeah. That's very sad. I know. Um, What else is new? So the other update, I don't know if I've talked about on the podcast is my Morpheus journey. I graduated from Morpheus. Claps for me. Congrats. Thank (laughs) you. Explain what it is if people don't know. Okay. So Morpheus, if you guys are not familiar, it is basically the most innovative next facial thing on the market. I'm explaining this horribly. (laughs) Um, But basically, if you know what or are familiar with microneedling, have you ever gotten microneedling, Rye? No. Wow. You you have such great skin. Well, no, I just haven't done any of this. I want to. No. I I feel like you don't even need it. Like I was talking to Kaylee because she has perfect skin, Kaylee Sparger. And... um, like she gets mild like facial treatments and I'm like, you're just so lucky. But I say all that because microneedling I've gotten before I got that leading up to the wedding. And it's just basically, obviously a form of needle going into your skin to help with scarring and, um, pigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, all that kind of stuff. But Morpheus, instead of it being one specific needle going in, Morpheus is like a stamp of needles. Oh my gosh. So it's like it hurt so bad. Okay. So that's why I was so scared to always do it is because everyone hyped up how painful it was and you numb for an hour before. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. I'm just sitting there while I'm numbing. (laughs) Just like, um, I was so scared the first time, but where I go, Lumi, they offer laughing gas and nerve blocking. If you're like really tense and scared about it, but that's like serious. I know, but I didn't need it with just the numbing cream. I was fine. You are, they usually recommend that you get three sessions. And so I just finished my third session within the last week, um, which is really exciting. I came out of the room, like I graduated from Morpheus. I was so proud because, um, I won't get like too into it, but I just had recently gotten off of birth control and was dealing with some acne scarring and it was just making me so insecure about my skin. And I was like, okay, I can fight through this pain, which I seriously, it was so tolerable for knowing there's a result in the end. Like at least the pain has a reward and I see so much of a difference in my skin. So if you're someone who is, I mean, there's so many perks to it. People do it for all sorts of different things. Mine was basically scarring and just like redness. Um, I see such a difference in my skin. So I'm excited for it to fully heal. I'll come back and give an additional update. And I sometimes talk about it on my Instagram. Um, but I'm all about skincare. Like I love getting stuff done at like medical centers for stuff like this, because I feel like it's just so awesome that there's stuff out there to help you be confident in your skin. Cause skin is such a big thing. Don't you think? Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that you see such a difference and you're so happy with it. So three sessions, like if you wanted to go again, could you, or is it like three sessions and you're done forever? So I think maybe you could get one, like an additional one that will like assess you, but they say normally three is what you need. And then maybe once a year you get it kind of just as maintenance. So I am going to get IPL now moving forward into the fall. They say you shouldn't really get lasers in the dead of summer because you're exposed to the sun. So that will help me with my redness, but 
if you're in a skin journey and you're on the fence of putting yourself first and investing, I highly recommend it because it can just do wonders for your confidence. Um, so yeah, I wanted to update you on that because I'm really Yay. happy with the results. I'm so glad you did it. I'm sure it was kind of like nerve wracking going in the first time, especially cause you knew yes. it could hurt a little bit, but I'm proud of you. And so glad that you have a place that you trust near you like that Lumi, like you say, um, but yay, I wanted to ask you about something else that is literally so random, but okay. I don't know what made me think of this, but the Ariana Grande situation, we haven't mm. really talked about it. We're late to the game. It's been unfolding for a while, but she's been posting her 10 year anniversary for her sweetener album or is it yours truly? Um, One of her albums. I feel like it has to be yours truly because sweetener was like not 10 years. Like, isn't Sweetener where we went together? Yeah, we went to that concert. So this would have been 10 There's years no of way. yours, truly. Yeah. And she's been posting a lot about it. And it's just making me think about the whole situation where she was like dating her co-star who was married. Dude. And I just am confused <laughs> about it. What are I, your thoughts? First of all, I am like, go off for not saying a word and just releasing music <laughs> or like this anniversary content after you haven't put out music. Like I thought before all this came out, I'm like, okay, she's just taking a break. Like her last album was amazing. She went through so much. And then like all this is randomly coming out. And I feel like you probably thought about her when I was talking about Morpheus. Cause I'm like, she like something's not her. Like she, she looks, looks different. different. Like, did she get something done? Her eyebrows, like she looks, <laughs> I don't know. And like she, oh my gosh, Riley and I love us some Ariana Grande. So mm -hmm. we went to like two of her concerts together. And at those concerts, I feel like all we did was stare at how beautiful she was. And not that she's not beautiful now. She just looks different. Something's different. Yeah, I agree. Um, and by the way, she also just went through a divorce. So it's like all this well, yeah. stuff is happening and I'm just like, what's going on? <laughs> I just like uh, my heart goes to the guy. So if you guys aren't familiar, I'm sure you are. We're pretty late to this. Um, but the wicked star that she was hooking up with or dating or whatever the heck they are. And he, <laughs> no offense, is not the cutest in the bat in the patch. <laughs> <laughs> and like, she was so under the wraps with her lawyer husband. Like, I'm like, she's happy. She's content. She's low key. She's just like enjoying life. Divorce, I think he was a realtor or realtor. Sorry. Um, and I feel bad for the wicked's wife and kid. I know me like, too. Like, I feel like, so bad. Why did he do that to his poor family? Like, come on, Ari. <laughs> like, come on. Literally like, anyone. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, once this wicked is over, like you're probably, I could confidently say you're not going to last with him. So why go through all of that to affect yeah. like the family? And is that have something to do with her divorce or was it because she was divorced and she was lonely and struggling? Like I have so many question marks all over the whole thing. So many question marks. I know. I just, I think about it because she's been posting a lot recently and just wants nothing to do with that other narrative. She's just going on with her life. That guy that she's dating now, he's like Faid. <laughs> he is Faid beyond. Like, <laughs> like I saw a side by side because I didn't even really know what her husband looked like. And I'm like, what, in, what is going on? Like something she, is not right. She definitely like has a type. Mm -hmm. And it's not my type. It's not my type. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you do you, Ari. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like contemplate. I'm just was in a deep spiral thinking about her. Um, <laughs> let's switch gears to something a little bit lighter. Your TikTok the other day of Cade being full on Bob the Builder. Can we get a oh little gosh. debrief? Well, explain to everyone what's going on at the McClure okay. household. So Cade <laughs> is dying to put a TV on our outside deck and he, our deck is not covered. And so he's like, I'm going to build a box to go around the TV and be like an outdoor box that the TV's in. I'm like, Oh God, you've never done anything <laughs> like that before. Wait, wait, wait. Can we pause this? Yeah. And can you give pre-context to when your dad and Cade were building the deck? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and okay. what happened? Okay. So a couple years ago. Wait, when did they build the deck? Like a year and a half ago. 
Yeah, I think. A year and a half ago, my dad and my husband decided to build a deck off of our house, which sounds great in theory, but they've never done it before. (laughs) And so the day that they were digging the holes, their first day on the job, they hit a gas line in the ground and it was a huge deal. I had to call 911 and like the whole fire department comes and it was just honestly it's not funny it's not funny but it's only funny now because it's over like we had to pay all this money for this company to come in and fix the gas line it was a mess and after that happened I'm like do you guys still want to build the deck like we can call a contractor and bring (laughs) someone in but nonetheless they persevered they built the deck they did a great job and deck is stunning it is it's great um and I think Cade learned a lot of how to be handy just from like building the deck with the guys. Mm -hmm. And so now he thinks he can build anything apparently. So (laughs) anyways, he has this vision about a TV box and I'm like, I don't know about that being upstairs, like on the top deck and the side of our house. So I told him he could do it under the patio, Smart, which is still outside. He still gets what he wants, a TV outside. And so he like took that and ran with it, literally went and got all the supplies that same day. He has a pencil in his hat at all times because that's what kills me. It's so funny. And so, yeah, he's building this. I like hear saws going off all day long and (laughs) it's not finished yet. So... So will it be on like a pillar from the deck? Is that where he's like drilling it in or is it like a full stand? So he's going to hang it from like the beams underneath the deck. And then we have a patio area where it will be, but it has to be enclosed because it can't get wet from like weather and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm fine with it being down there because no one will see it if it's like turns out not great. I feel like... I'm not saying I don't have faith, but also he's never done this before. I feel like at least he, I saw in the video, he had some wood stains going. Like at least he's caring about the aesthetic side and knows it needs to be like stained to match. Um, I have faith after seeing the deck. How do you do? (laughs) I have faith because when Kate is passionate about something, he's all in like with the, the griller or the smoker. Yeah. He loves his smoker. Gosh, he's making ribs on Sunday. I'm like, I don't even like ribs, but oh my gosh, I love, love, love the dedication. And because seeing his results with the deck gives me faith. Like he, he's one for one. Yeah. I will let you know how it turns out. I think it'll be fine, but well, I'm just glad s- it's not up. Yes. I was thinking though, like Pittsburgh in the fall is everything and he probably wants it so he can watch football out there. Is that why? Yeah, for sure. He's obsessed. Yeah. Speaking of football, and Cade. So <laughs> Cade is making us do a fantasy football oh league. Oh my gosh. Me, Rose, our whole friend group. He's making, he's not making it. He had this idea and I came to the girls and I was like, listen guys, Cade wants us to do a fantasy football league and everyone's on board. So our draft is in a couple of days and it is going to be so funny because I feel like I'm just picking the people who I follow their wives on Instagram, like Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to pick the teams, and our husbands or boyfriends have to run the league. But we, um, we have to do the picking of like the actual draft, and just say prayers for us because please, we don't know. And like all our men are trying to give us strategy. They're like, you have to do this, and Riley, Kate's telling Riley that she has to do a mock draft, and all these guys, all the guys are giving us all this context. We get on there. We're probably going to have a cocktail and it's just going to be a absolute shit show. So we'll stay tuned on, or we'll keep you guys updated on how that goes and unfolds. And what is the like winner versus loser? Like, did we decide? So for the buy-in, I think we're all going to pitch in like 25 bucks and the winner gets money, but the loser has to post a tutorial on their Instagram story. But we like the group collectively gets to pick what the tutorial has to be. So none of us are going to want to lose. I was going to say, but like in all seriousness, Riley and I are definitely the most Instagram active and like social media active. So I'm pulling for Riley and I to not lose just because it'll be so much funnier if someone who's not (laughs) used to doing tutorials and stuff like this. Um, Also, Emily's fiance, Jeff said the winner has to get a shout out on the pod. So, oh yeah. Whoever wins the fantasy football league will be getting a shout out (laughs) here. But if you guys have a friend group and this is something that 
you think you guys will have fun with, I would recommend. I mean, it's been kind of funny just chatting about it and trying to figure it out and gets the boys involved. So yeah, hopefully it'll be I fun. Feel, I feel like too, it's great for friends, like adult friends that are living far away or can't get together that often. Obviously any friend group, you know, it, it's fun and it's just like a, a good way to bring everyone together, but it's having, it's such a fun thing for us to feel like we're all close to each other during football yes. season, even though we're all over the country. So I'm excited, even though I'm going to tank. I know. I feel like it'll at least make me be more in, interested in football this year. Like usually yes. Kate puts the game on and I'm just like scrolling Instagram. So I don't know. Maybe we'll so be. So one, I did a fantasy football one time years ago and um, I was so much more into it. Like I was like only watched by one player, um, but I messed up. Well, this can be a tip for us to use when we're drafting. I accidentally messed up and all my whole team was out on the same week. You know how one week, <laughs> yeah. one week, everyone's like out. I'm like, oh shoot, I have no one in the lineup tonight <laughs> or this week. And I always forgot. Everyone's like, okay, you know how I feel like change your, I, I'm so happy we don't have to run the team because I always forgot to go in. They're like, you gotta, you gotta change it by this time. You gotta, um, like, I don't even know. I don't know the terminology. You have to like change your people by a certain time of the week. Oh my gosh. Does that make sense? I don't even yeah. know what that means. I don't but know how it works either. I forgot. So I'm happy once we pick, who cares who we pick? Our guys have to run it from there. So good yeah, luck. So <laughs> the fun of it is that the girls pick the team and then the guys have to manage the team that the girls picked because the guys aren't allowed to help us pick on draft day. So we will let you guys know how that goes. It's going to be so interesting. But Very much. speaking of football and fall... I wanted to tell you guys, if you like pumpkin scented things, you need the hemp's, I think it's chai and pumpkin scented lotion. It's amazing. And the scent like lingers on you and it's just the perfect fall scent. I actually need to restock. So I will be getting that. I don't know if you've ever smelled it, Rose. I don't know. If I've ever brought it to your house. You can get it at Ulta. I was going to say, I know the brand and maybe I've seen mm-hmm. it just like at your house, but I've never bought it. And I think I should because I'm it's like, amazing. I'm, I'm slowly getting on the, I don't know where I stand on the fall trend. I'm so back and forth. I'm like summer forever fall. I can't decide. Um, and like Starbucks already has all their Starbucks and Duncan have their drinks out. And I'm like, I can't like, have you gotten one yet? I'm like, Riley probably has gotten no. a, a pumpkin drink. I am so proud of myself for not getting one yet. I'm trying to wait until September because I feel like August is just too, like I'm obsessed with all things pumpkin, but I feel like August is way too soon. Yeah, I do too. It's like, I mean, it is so freaking hot here right now. I'm like, (laughs) nothing about this is fall. (laughs) I feel like I go, I do go zero to 100. So September 1st, I will be the first person in line at Starbucks, but trying to hold out. (laughs) I don't have that much longer to wait. So when are you going to decorate for fall in your house? That's another debate. Um, maybe sometime early September. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what, should Love I wait that. till October? No. I feel like I you mean, judged just no, now. No. I just, I, I don't have a huge stock for um, like fall Halloween decor. I feel like you could do fall in September and then add the Halloween Halloween. stuff Mm -hmm. come like late September because I'm not judging. No, I'm not judging because November 14th on my birthday, every year I start decorating for uh, Christmas because if you love that time of year, it goes by so fast. Like you want to enjoy your house before you have to put it down, you know? That's such a fun tradition for you on your birthday. Yeah. Just something, something slight. I wanted to update you guys. I got the Madagascar vanilla roller that I mentioned last episode. It smells so good. If you like a very warm vanilla scent, you will love it. I actually want to see. So Nest has those Pura scents rose that you got me on. And I want to see if this scent comes in Pura because it's perfect for fall. It's very warm. I love Oh my gosh. Okay. While we're on this fall trend, what I definitely excited about before I comment on the Madagascar is Pura fall sense. Oh my gosh. There's nothing like it. That is my peak part of fall. Like the scents on the Pura site are next level. You, if they do have it, will you let me know? Cause I want to get it. Yeah. You would love very warm vanilla. 
Okay. So with the perfume, are you into it? I'm not sure. I feel like you're sold. No, I love it. It's not like it's a roller. So it's an oil. I just put it on my wrists and it just adds like a little something. So you wear perfume as well. I do roller on my wrists and then like a couple sprays of my regular perfume on like my body. And you feel like it like compliment. It kind of just adds to it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like yeah. I should try it. I just want to have, I had a roller. My roller was more like musky, like amber scents, mm-hmm. which I know you like too. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the vanilla will be great for fall vibes. So, okay. For All sure. Right. Yeah. What do you, that. what's in your cart? Okay. Well, I have to say, I love the people who reached out to me because I slightly put on my story a few days ago. Um, my green Sambas, they made their appearance because I did order them and people were like, you got the shoes, you got them. They were like, people were commenting back. I was like, wow, this is the kind of people I need my life to (laughs) validate all my purchases. Um, but I got them. Here's why I got them. One, because I wanted them. Most important. (laughs) Most importantly. That's a great reason. (laughs) Thank you. Two, is I wear the most common size of shoes and it's my what is size it? six is and a half, seven, seven and a half. Oh, so same. How didn't I know that? Yeah. I was like, yeah, you had we... a smaller foot than me. No, no. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it finally, for some reason I went on the site on like a random day and they had my size in sock and they were like two, you know, two left, uh, which I don't even know if that's true, but I'm like sold. The, whenever <laughs> it says how many are left, that gets me, it could say like a hundred left and I'd be like, it's running out. I got to get it. So Same. I feel you on that. So I ordered it. And also the third and final reason why I got them is because, um, I figured I could wear them to the Tate McRae concert that I'm going to soon. It'd be like Yay. a cute, you know, just like a reason to wear them. So I got the Sambas. I love them. I feel like it's a nice switch up a little bit less like bold than the black ones. So got those and I'm loving them. And then, okay. So something else that's in my cart that has been in my cart for so long is an, I need a new pair of headphones. Honestly, me too. It's like uh, definitely a want, not a need. Um, mm-hmm. Because I don't know, I feel like AirPods don't fit my ears well. I love that they noise cancel, but I don't know. I'm just like, people say you're supposed to wear certain headphones for walking versus like listening to music or working out. I'm like, okay, I I can't do all of that, but I kind of want to get like a new pair of Beats or Bose or Bose, however you say it, Bose, whatever, B-O-S-E. They have amazing headphones that I feel like aren't maybe as flashy as the Apple and Beats, but are so much more affordable. Um, Mm -hmm. Even Beats compared to the new Apple Air Mac or Air Pros or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about, like the big aesthetic ones. But I'm hearing mixed reviews on those as well. So I don't know, like, I, I want a pair, but I, if you guys are like a big headphone person, please feel free to like give us some insight because we both could use them. We don't need them, but I don't know. I just kind of want a new pair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, w- I need a new pair, but you're right. It's not like imminent that I get them tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I just, I need a good over the head pair, not yes. like my AirPods. Oh, yes. yes, absolutely. Over the head. Um, and I don't need them, but like every time I see like a cute person taking like a cute aesthetic <laughs> photo walking or like, I'm like, oh, I want them. I feel like it just makes them feel so much more put together. So yeah. um, that has been like a lingering item in my cart and maybe I'll grab it for, I don't know, I'm really foreshadowing, but like uh, Black Friday, I feel like electronics are a good oh Black my gosh, Friday you're deal. you're so right. Let's, I don't know. okay, let's find out what style we want and then get them on black Friday. Good job. Okay. All right. Perfect. So if you guys have a pair you love, preferably not the Apple ones, <laughs> yeah. then we work, we'll get them for black Friday. Um, and then the only other thing in my cart is I have been obsessing over like the split cami tanks or just like any split shirts where if you guys are watching the video, um, it basically like right under where your boobs are, it just splits open. And I feel like it's so very cute. Fun- it's so cute. It's like light and baby doll and girly, but I think I like it the most because it's super flattering. Mm-hmm. 
and I you think can it's wear so it flattering. With, yeah, like you can wear it up, we can wear it down. And so I just grabbed um three or four different kind of styles because I always am gravitating towards the ones that I have in my closet right now. So I figured it'd be perfect for like transitional pieces going into fall slowly where it's still hot, but you kind of want to, you know, get into the fall vibe of fashion. Cause I know yes. you love fall fashion. Love it. I actually do need your advice. I think maybe I will look for some of those shirts. So I'm going to visit my sister in college in a couple of weekends. We're going to a football game. She's on the dance team. So we're going to go watch her and I don't know, like what the heck do I wear? It's not going to be chilly, but it's not going to be super hot. And I'm just okay. like, what do I wear to a football game? And so, it's not. Sorry. Go ahead. What do you think? I am torn. Are you going to wear, do you want to wear colors to support not really, Kendall? Cause it, um, their colors are like purple and gold. And I just, I don't have a lot of clothes that color. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like if you like, do white or black, it's kind of yeah. like in that realm. That's what I was thinking. So, It'd be so cute if you found like a black and white split cami if, or just like a cute top or bodysuit and then just like wore some, like, I don't even know, jeans may be pushing it with, depending on the heat, to, you know, you never know. know. It's actually like really hard. It is. Well, I would search just like H&M, Forever, Princess Polly. I feel like they yeah. have such cute trendy pieces that you could find something cute. You're right. Maybe bring like a short and skirt option and then pants and kind of go with the weather at the time. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to look for yeah. some of those split tops that you mentioned. Yay. Yeah. Yay. I got a bunch on forever, but, um, before we dive into the the meat of the episode, the good stuff, um, are you going to go out with Kendall? Oh, like out on the town you mean? Yeah. Like, is she taking you through a college weekend or what's going to be the vibe? You never know with her. She like beats to her own drum, but I'm sure she will want to show me around and oh, I feel like I it's her stomping grounds. So yeah, I'm excited to, I'm excited to see where she lives and just mm -hmm. see JMU in general. So yay. is Katie going to go? Yeah. Me and Kate are going. My parents are going. My grandparents are going. Aww. So it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. After you go, the next time we film, we'll have to get the full recap. Of course. I feel like Yay. It's be, I'm excited. It's going to be so fun. Yay. But let's get into it. This episode is going to be so oh much gosh. fun. I hope. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be bringing back, bringing back a lot of memories. So basically we asked you guys on our Instagram to write in questions that you had about So Sharp. If you're not familiar with So Sharp, it is the reality show that Rose and I were on in college. It followed our dance team, the Louisville Ladybirds. And so, yeah. Do you want to explain anything else or should we get into it? No, just that a bunch of you guys ask questions and by all means, like we will do our best to answer the top, um, like 10 questions or however many Riley pulled. Um, but we can totally dive into separate, like this is not going to be the only so sharp episode. This is just like the generic opening the door because a lot of people want to know. And I just need to like chug this drink because literally <laughs> PTSD, that's just how we're going to start. I mean, okay. So you chug and I'll read the first question. Question number one, how did they pick the featured girls for the show? So there were like 40 girls on the team at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 40 and like only 20 did stuff. Yeah. Only like 20 <laughs> were on the floor. And how many girls were featured? Maybe 10 or more? I feel like it was like maybe eight to 10 were featured. And then there was like a couple minor features. Yeah. And do you remember how they picked? I like don't even really remember. So uh, all I remember is I don't know if everyone was asked to, but I know like at least the 20 people who were on the floor mostly. So yeah, there's 40 people on the team, but the same 20 to 25 people are doing like all the appearances and they're, you know, showing face at all the football and basketball stuff. I believe, and I could be wrong, so don't quote us on this, that we all interviewed those like top 20 people. And um, Riley and I had to interview together. Thank oh, yeah. freaking gosh, because yeah. it just helped us be like more loosey goosey, which is funny because at the time we had no clue that we were being pulled, that our role was like the best friends. We didn't know if they would were going to pick us. They didn't know if they were going to just make us our own people, but 
thank goodness it worked out like that. We were so nervous. I know, and it's crazy. We'll have to throw up some content, TBT content <laughs> yeah. of that interview on our Instagram story. But I think from there, they just kind of saw who was like natural because we had to do like a mock interview. You're right. And I think the producers and cast just then, or the cast was picked from how how well they liked the interview, I guess. Yeah, you're right. I totally forgot about this. So we had to go in and do an interview and they filmed it and they asked us questions. And I think basically they were just trying to figure out the dynamic of the team. And from there, they were able to piece together like, oh, there's going to be drama here. Oh, this girl. It's Mm -hmm. just like they kind of put the puzzle pieces together from all of these different interviews with different girls. And yeah. And I feel like They were so, they went in with a mission, like we need a mean girl. We need a favorite. We need a best friends. We need the, um, like girl who's working to get a spot on the floor. Like they had their agenda. They were just looking to, like you said, fill in the puzzle pieces. Yep. A hundred percent. So next question was Todd as harsh in real life or was it for the show? I'll let you start. I feel like he was harder on us, not on the show. (laughs) It's like hit or miss. Like he, I will say like Riley and I have the utmost respect for Todd. Um, Oh, love Todd to death. Like love him to death. And he opened so many doors and opportunities for Riley and I, I mean, we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast right now if it wasn't for him. I will say he expected a lot of us, but he believed in us and supported us more than anyone. I don't know if that kind of explains the answer to the question, but He was tough, but because he knew what he was looking for and he knew what we are capable of. And some days were harder than others, like the way he presented his feelings. But at the end of the day, we were some of Todd's favorite girls. So we had such a good relationship and he had such a good side too that made his crazy moments not as crazy, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think the reason why we were so successful as a team was because he was really hard on us and because he expected so much from us and wanted nothing but perfection. And so we just wanted to put out our best work because we wanted to prove that to him. So Mm -hmm. it was not for show. He was a very tough coach. Um, but I mean, you're not going to get anywhere if your coach isn't tough, you know? Yeah. I was going to say like the dance world was so foreign to Riley and I, when we went into college and, Oh, sorry. Dance team. Um, and I firmly believe like, I mean, he was like a God in that, Mm -hmm. that world. Like he knew exactly what he was doing. He was known for winning. He was known for being innovative. And as far as the ladybirds went, love it or hate it. We loved it and hated it at the same time. But like, we had a specific look and like, I, you can feel how you feel about that, but we were known for being like cute and fit and a certain realm of girls. And I feel like that held us to the standard of what we were. And I feel like not every dance team in the country does that, which is kind of something that kind of made the ladybird stand apart. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you had roots, it was like, (laughs) when are you getting your hair done? (laughs) Just little things like that. Um, But we love Todd. A lot of people also asked us, Rose, I don't think this is in the questions, but if we still stay in touch with Todd and we do as much as we can, um, but definitely still have a great relationship with him and we love him, even though he's really tough. (laughs) Yes, he was tough, but we, we love him. And yeah, we don't talk to him like all the time, but we're always like supporting his social media. And if we saw him out, it would be awesome. But yeah, yeah. we miss him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next question is, do you still talk to any of the other girls you used to dance with? Okay. This is a good one. Um, do you want to take it first? Sure. Yeah. So we do, of course, some of our very best friends were on the team with us, but I mean, the team was so big. It's not like we can talk to every single person. I feel like our little groups stayed close and we support all the other girls on social media. And it's just, you know, you have your friend groups and we were all different ages, but yeah, we definitely still talk to the girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say like, um, like where we don't see them all or hang out all the time or like we're not in each other's weddings and things like that. We're always still cheering each other on and following each other on social media, which is like the beautiful part of social Mm -hmm. media. But yeah, like Riley said too, we had four different team, like four different teams. So there's new girls all the time. 
So we're closer with probably the people within our class and one or two years either way. Um, but I'd say obviously Riley and I are the closest, but there's no like animosity between anyone no. that you saw on the show. Like we love not and respect. We, not that we them. know of. <laughs> not between at least us on our end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next question. How did it feel as the show aired? <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel um, like it was very tense because you do these one-on-one interviews with the producers and no one knows what you say in there. And they kind of, they don't necessarily tell you what to say, but they kind of coach you and like make you feel a certain way. And so we would all watch the show together and we'd be like, wait, you said that about me? Or you said that about her? We're like, oh my gosh. Oh gosh. This is like <laughs> opening wounds, opening wounds for sure. But <laughs> So we had like a big premiere party and that was super fun. But we, I feel like a lot of times people will say like, did you get to watch the episode before it aired? No, no. (laughs) And mind you, they are so freaking good at splicing like their editing skills. Shit. We need to get them to edit our podcast because (laughs) they know how to splice And like, you could say, I could be like, Riley was so sweet and I don't know. And today Riley had like an off day. I don't know something. And they'll take off Riley and then be showing like Marissa falling out of a turn. And it's like, she's having a bad day. And it's my voice. I'm like, what? I never said that. (laughs) Like, so they just were really good at, if your voice said something, they could spin it any way. Um, but watching it air, I will say the, the, um, the, the premiere party was so fun. I was so like, fun. this is so cool. Like our parents came into town. The producers Katie were there. Was there. Oh my Remember God. I met Katie that. Yeah. It was so yes. fun. Um, but I will say the one episode, so Riley, Marissa, and so it was me, you, Marissa and Lex. Is that, was that our house? The one year? Yeah. Okay. So I remember this vividly. We all climb into Riley's bed to watch the episode and why this episode we chose to watch together. It was the one, I think it was the one where I got pulled off center. Wasn't it? Yep. Talk about awkward as hell because I was like, that day was like so triggering for me. And we can kind of explain that story in a second after I finished this thought, but like, Rye, how awkward was it when things were unfolding in that episode? For sure. Just because like we didn't get to see it beforehand and the producers just make it look like, like they want drama. That's what makes a TV show. And so there was a lot of drama and all of us are watching it together and it probably wasn't the best idea. No, it was not our best idea. But basically that episode in particular was probably one of the top longest days of my life. We... We're filming all day. I don't know if this is a question about like our filming schedule. Yeah, it so, is. We, you can talk about that. Okay. So basically, let's just put it in context. We're at school all day in the morning, and then we had to go early to practice. Um, I believe this actual episode was on the weekend that we filmed um, because we did the sleepover and everything, but oh, gosh. Um, we would just a typical day. We would wake up, go to class all day. And then we would have to go two or three hours early to practice to get do little, up. yeah, like little skits. And what, what do they call <laughs> What were those called? It was like they B-roll w- maybe. No. Oh, I this- forget. But we had to go and like, they had to put our dancing with a microphone on your body also was the <sighs> most annoying thing. It was just a hassle, but you're right. We went to class all day. And then sometimes we even had to film before practice, go to practice three hours early, do all this filming stuff, get annihilated and yelled at (laughs) at practice. And then after practice, you had to go and sometimes do interviews about practice. So it was just so draining. You're right. Oh my gosh. I just remember the days were like, depending on what was going on that week, like Riley would, (laughs) I just had the vivid memory of you like crying, walking to the subway after (laughs) that one episode. Oh my gosh. But, um, like I'd be just waiting in the car, like, Oh, hope everything's going well for Riley. I'll just, (laughs) cause we carpooled, obviously like we lived together and some days it was my week, but anyways, I'm putting all that into context. So this episode 
where I get pulled off center that same day after I'm getting ripped to shreds when like I, I was just unclear in the moment. Like, am I being pulled off center for the show or because I actually like deserve to get pulled because I don't know. I was just like so affected that Todd did that. Cause he, it wasn't in his nature to do that to me. Like he's done that to other mm-hmm. people. So you know, there's all this context building. The producers are pushing me to say stuff. They're pushing me and Marissa to have like animosity towards each other. And like, we're close friends. So it's like, it's just so tense, so emotional, so tiring emotionally. And then we leave that practice and go right to Marissa's house. Like we literally had to fix up in Marissa's house upstairs and put on freaking Victoria's Secret robes (laughs) for the sleepover. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds so funny psychotic to say that out loud. I'm like, I, I think we even said to our, our producer, like every group of people had like a main is producer, the right word, like what so. Carrie and yeah. So our girl, we had a great relationship with Carrie was our girl, but, um, I was like, Carrie, we're in college. Girls don't wear ro- Victoria's secret robes to, to sleepovers. This is not how it goes. <laughs> I was just like on edge that day anyway. So then we go into the sleepover and that was just a whole different beast in itself. I blacked out. I blacked out. (laughs) Wait, let me pull up this question about the sleepover because they said something funny. Oh, someone said that sleepover mess. Was it staged? Go ahead, Brian. It was staged, right? I honestly, to be completely honest, I just remembering like, truly like blacking out for a second. I remember I like got heated really quickly, but the whole thing was definitely set up for like certain people to be invited versus not. Yeah. I just, I don't really remember the episode in depth. Like what did we talk about? It was like making nationals. It was, we were having a sleepover to talk about nationals and then Gab and Michelle showed up and Gab wasn't invited. And then Marissa was saying, Gab, why would we invite you? You weren't, <laughs> you don't know how the national floor is. And so, Rough. yeah, it was just like the producers knew it would be drama. And so they kind of like staged that sleepover and for all that to unfold. And so, yes, it was staged. <laughs> it was staged and they were so smart to do it after we were already emotionally and physically exhausted because yep they got what they wanted quick because, you know, girls don't do well emotionally and physically exhausted. So yes. Gosh. Okay. (laughs) Um, let me see. I feel like we answered a couple in that one. Yeah. Sorry guys. I just went to therapy real quick. (laughs) I know. It's so crazy (laughs) to talk about this. Okay. So this question is, was any of the drama fake slash producer created? I feel like they just knew situations that would like rile us up. And so they kind of made certain situations happen, but it wasn't scripted per se. It was just, they knew how to kind of get us to be drama. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I would say it wasn't like full scripted, but they would prompt you to have a conversation or set you up in situations that would bring out certain emotions or behaviors. So where it may not have happened organically, it wasn't like say this exact thing. There were instances and I'm just like vividly taken back to the Yum Center, which is where we had basketball games. And it was when Kayla and like Kobe and Taylor got in like a big tiff. And the reason why is like they were pushing for something to happen, like a conversation to be had. And we basically, none of us could go home until this skit was done or whatever this part of the episode was done and we were so pissed off and drained that I mean shit just went fucking haywire excuse my language (laughs) I have like the raw video on my phone and I'm like what is going on right now but do you remember that they were like come back like you can't leave like I just remember it was either like Carlos or Brian they were like you need to just just do this and you can go home And at this point, everyone, like we just did probably all day of practice, all day of school, all day of filming. And then we're at a basketball game and all of us just want to go home. So they're like, you, like Riley said, they just, they worked their magic in areas to like, I wouldn't say manipulate us, but get us into a vulnerable state to get what they needed. 
A hundred percent. And dancing was hard enough as it was. Todd was hard enough on us without the TV show. So then adding in this whole other factor, it was an insane year. Like, thank God we had each other to lean on and get through it because it was a lot. A lot to say the least. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. We need to know about that scene where Rose got attacked. Was it fake or real? A hundred percent real. That was so scary. <laughs> like, what oh happened? My. Okay, so that was a hundred percent real. Of course, it happened to me. That is just spot on to my life. Of course, <laughs> it happened to Rose. Like, he. So, explain what happened <laughs> because I'm still confused about it. This is honestly like another blackout moment for me. Like we're just doing our sideline routine and all of a sudden just this male is full charging at me and all these <laughs> cops are <laughs> This coming. is at like a packed basketball game. Yes, we're on sorry, the floor during a timeout doing, we call them ditties, like our little sideline dances. And so there's a huge audience watching us. And I just remember seeing out of the corner of my eye, this man <laughs> like running on to the court <laughs> And then the next thing I know, Rose is on the ground. There's remember all those police officers like came and surrounded you. It was very scary. It was yeah, I'm laughing now, but like it was actually like very um like what's the word? Like when it like shakes you, like I was really shaken up. Yeah. I was so confused. I'm like, did the producer like is this fake? What's going on here? Um it was basically, I believe what actually happened is like a mentally ill person, like a super fan or some situation like broke through security and got onto the court. It like had nothing to do with me. It just happened to be that you were in the I crosshair. Was right. <laughs> and I think I was more scared than anything, but then the producers yeah. are like, they probably like ran up to that guy and were like, thank you so much. You just made the best episode naturally for us. But, um, <laughs> They built off that whole, like, your ankles hurt. Like, I mean, I was. I mean, he did t- pummel on my, my ankle. Your and shoe f- flipped off. I, know, I, I mean, just remember making you. eye contact with Rai, like, what, <laughs> what's going on? What just happened? But I didn't want that to become a bigger story and become, like, for the next few weeks, like, her ankle, her ankle. I'm like, I'm fine. I was just more shaken up. Like, yes, my ankle hurts, but, like, I'm fine. And I... I in that context of the story, I was so thankful for how protective Todd was over me after that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that just shows how he was towards all of us all the time. Like, yeah, Mm -hmm. he was hard on us, but he never wanted anything bad to happen to us. And he would go the extra mile to make sure we're so safe. You're right. Yeah, Todd got him like full fledged arrested. He's like, he is in jail. (laughs) I was like, Oh, good. Because now I am like, I'm feeling safe. But I apparently Todd had found out that he like was mentally unwell, that that person. So yeah, very scary. So random and 100% real. 100% real. Very scary. I forgot about that. Good times. Oh, this is cute. So this person asked, were you dating your husbands at the time of filming? Yes. We were. Then dating. Was Kate in Louisville or was he already... In he was in Pro Louisville. Okay. Um, it was hard though because we were so busy. I like remember not really seeing him a lot that year because we had mm-hmm. so much going on between school, dance, filming. It was a lot. It was hard. Yeah. It was a lot. Um, and normal athletes, like their schedule is early in the morning. And then by dinner, unless they have games that night or they're traveling, then their day's ending where Lady Bird, like we obviously during filming, our whole day is doing Lady Bird stuff and filming. But then on top of it, we always practice at night. So we just had bipolar opposite schedules than our boyfriends, which was super tough. And you come home with all this adrenaline after practice and they're like, it's midnight. Let's go to bed. And we're like, no, like we're, we're, we're ready to go. Like the night is young. We came alive Um, at night. (laughs) We really did. That's when we peaked. But, um, I will say really quickly on this. Remember when Brian, the main producer wanted us to uh, put a flyer out on campus to apply for fake boyfriends, because I know the (laughs) NCAA was like, absolutely not. Like your boyfriends will not be like, I know for a fact oh. they wanted Kate and Ryan to be on it. And the, like the athletic department at U of L 
because basketball and baseball are huge sports there. They're like, absolutely not. Like we can't put them. They're like, okay, well we can put uh, flyers out for Riley and Rose to have fake boyfriends for the, I, for the season. I'm cracking up. I <laughs> totally forgot about that, but that is so true. They're like, well, you need to have boyfriends. Like if your boyfriends can't be on it, we'll just get you stand-ins. <laughs> Like, we're what like, is going um, on? no, we're putting our foot down there. I think Todd had our back on that and was like, that's just not going to work. Like, of course he did. It's yeah. Because I think, we, I don't even think we talked about our boyfriends at all on the show. No. Because yeah. the other sports teams were like, no, we don't want anything to do with this right. show. And in general, like the other teams and other people at the school thought we were so cringe for having a TV show. It was like embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except um, I'd say baseball and basketball probably the most, just because we are so we are friends with so many of them. No, yeah, I'm I'm mostly saying like other girls, the girl sports. Yeah, oh gosh, not good. <laughs> we're like, what? Um, we're on a TV show. Like, they what's the we big were deal? So weird. I know. Gosh. Like, we'd show oh. up to parties like in our stilettos and mini skirts, and they'd be in like sundresses and tennies. They would dress up as us for Halloween to make fun of us. <laughs> Remember oh my that? God, I do remember that. What the fuck? That is oh so rude. God. So rude. It's okay. okay. We're not going to open that wound right now. I forgot. Also, I wanted to say the worst part about filming is sometimes we would literally have to go to, say, a coffee shop, like in between class, in between practice, in between all this stuff, film mm-hmm. for an hour or so. And then they wouldn't even show it on the show. They would like cut it out. So there were so, so many. much. There were so many scenes that we did that just never aired and it's like that was our time to do our homework (laughs) oh my gosh yeah that's triggering I forgot about all that um okay this is actually the last question because we covered so much in our answers but this person asked was the dance team friends with the cheer team at my college that wasn't the case oh my gosh yes um best friends with I mean, we were friends with the entire cheer teams, but our actual best friends were on the cheer team as well. Like it was half and half, but I will say before there were some, er some years that they were good friends, but I I'm pretty sure like long before and now I'm not sure if there's much of a crossover. I've heard that, that, you know, once I've just heard that from people, I don't know. I could be wrong. So don't quote me on it. Um, but I know during our era and the eras surrounding our years, like cheer and dance were like best friends. Oh my gosh. We were best friends and we would like put our schedules aside at nationals to go watch each other perform and support each other. And it's just like, Mm -hmm. we all were going through it together, but yeah, the cheerleaders were our biggest hype. Oh my gosh. Watching the cheerleaders watch us perform like at Daytona where we did nationals they made it all worth it. They'd be front and center, so mm-hmm. loud. They'd be like pounding on the stage and like cheering. Like gives me chills just talking about it. Uh, some of the best memories ever. And yeah, I mean, half of our best friends that are in our weddings, you know, be- like Crystal, Lex, Blaine, mm-hmm. Erica, like all of them cheerleaders, like even our houses were half cheer, half dance. So yeah, yes. I feel like we wouldn't have gotten through Lady Birds and U of L and everything without the community of friends and support that we had. Like we just all leaned on each other because it wasn't really, it's, it's tough, but it's worth it. Yes. You know, totally agree. Yeah. I mean, just, you can relate to people that are going through similar things. Then like, I feel like U of L, we all clung to athletes. I feel like it was athletes and sororities at our school. Yeah. Cause it's like, you can relate to the schedule and you know, how taxing it can be physically and mentally and all that stuff. But what a time. It kind of makes me sad. It it does make me sad. Like in the moment, I feel like we were so miserable sometimes because it was so hard. But looking back, it's like, those were the days. The best. Those we had were the, the best days. memories. What do they say? You don't know you're in the days until they're done. That's really sad. I could I cry. I like want to go back on my Instagram and look at all our college photos. Now. <laughs> I know. It was such a, we were so blessed. Like, yeah, such a cool experience. Like, there were highs and lows to dance team highs and lows to the show, but nonetheless, like the, the pros outweighed the con for sure. Yeah, I agree completely. So those are all the questions that I have. We got so many more. So if you guys want us to dive into anything specific, maybe we'll take a couple episodes and circle back to this. Um, (laughs) but we hope you guys enjoyed getting a little bit of insight. (laughs) I'll do a wrap (laughs) around. I'm going to do a wrap around. 
Um, but let's switch gears and get into girls room. We have a couple of submissions here. So let me just go ahead and pull them up. Rose, do you want to explain what girls room is? Yes, of course. Okay. So girls room is our weekly segment that we are loving. And from the sounds of it with people replying, you guys are loving it as well. Um, it's basically a way to just write in for advice on situations you're going through questions you have. Honestly, nothing's off the table, but I want you guys to know like it is a safe and anonymous place. We actually just switched our form to a Google form, which is fully anonymous and we have them evergreen. But even if you wrote in on a Instagram submission, we have them. So if we didn't get to you, we will. Um, but basically, yeah, we just answer, take a few questions and give you our best advice or answer to the question. So that's okay. <laughs> okay. Submission number one. Hi, I am loving the podcast. We are so glad. I need some advice on wedding planning. I am newly engaged in having a hard time deciding how we will go about invites. Sorry, the words are really small. That's why I'm nope. struggling to read this. <laughs> um, my husband and I want a small, intimate wedding with close family, but are scared of what friends will say uh -huh. if they are not invited. It isn't personal, but our preference is to have something small with family. Okay. So basically okay. they want a really small wedding, but they don't want their friends to be upset if they're not invited. All right. What would you say? I'll say after going through planning a wedding, you have to do what you want. You can't mm -hmm. please everyone. And if they're your true friends, they'll understand that you just want a small wedding with family and they won't be upset. Maybe you could do like a friend's party, like a little reception with just your friends, something low key. Um, so you can celebrate with them, but you have to do what's best for you and what you want. You can't worry about them. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Great advice, right? I was going to say the party idea is perfect because then I think they truly understand like they just can't make it work. Like, and I personally feel after planning a wedding, I understand and I'm so empathetic to anyone having a wedding once right. I've already done it. I'm like, I understand it's expensive. Like you have to do what if you and your husband or fiance at the time are clear on what you want, there's going to probably be people that are upset or affected. But at the end of the day, once the wedding's over, the people that truly care about you will, will get over it. A hundred percent. Okay. Submission number two. My best friend is dating a guy we've known since high school. He's not a bad guy, but he's so lazy and doesn't do anything for her at all. She fully supports him financially and in every other way. And as her friend, it's hard for me to watch her get nothing in return from him. Every time I mention it to her, she gets mad at me. What do I do? That's really tough. What would you say, Rose? Oof. Um, that's rough. <laughs> um... I mean, it sounds like you said she already brought it to her attention and she gets yeah. mad. Yeah. I'm sure she's getting defensive because she knows it's true. I don't know. Like, I don't really know. I need to think for a second. Do you have like a strong feeling? I don't really know either, but I will say if you've already brought it to her attention and she gets defensive and she gets mad at you, it's not worth ruining your friendship. Like, mm -hmm. I know it's hard for you to see her with someone that's maybe not the best for her, but you have to be her friend first. And if you say something and it's just going to cause a fight, then I think it's best to maybe just kind of let it happen and just be there yeah. as a friend. Yeah. I would say too, something that came to mind is like, if you are in a great relationship or you have friends, like a group of friends and you're sitting at a girl's night per se, and you're talking and you're kind of just sharing the norms of your life. Like maybe he cooked dinner or maybe he treated you to a date night or something that maybe you have no clue what conversation could open her eyes one day and be like, Oh my gosh, like I need to have a conversation. Like not that a husband has to do I, you know, like every situation in every marriage is different. The, everyone has seasons where the wife or husband is pulling in different ways more than the other. Like that's what a marriage is about. But I would say it's the same thing as Riley, like just be there for her and just, you know, you can continue to hang out with her. Maybe one day that light will switch, like the switch. Wait, what's the saying? The switch will flip. Yeah. The switch will flip. Thank you. <laughs> You what said maybe heck? that light will come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on now. Whoa. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's tough that you've already had the combo and nothing has come of it. So 
I agree. It's not worth losing the friendship, but maybe one day things will change. Yeah. Okay. Submission number three. I am currently 26 and single. It is really hard to watch my friends and sorry, (laughs) the words are so small. It is really hard to watch my friends all in relationships engaged or getting married. I want to be happy for them, but I can't help but feel a little sad at times. Help, please. I know. That's really sad. I would say your person is coming. Like, try. I know it's hard and it's probably easy to say this rather than do it, but try not to be sad and try to just know that the wait is going to be worth it and your person is coming. Totally agree. And I will say... The moment I just stopped looking so hard for someone and I focused yeah. on myself and being happy by myself and like figuring out who I wanted to be, like Ryan had already been in my life, but it was like almost like a mental switch. Like, you know, like Kate and Ryan were both in our lives before we were with them, like romantically yeah. and dating them. And I feel like a lot of times it's, you just have to be in the right mental space with yourself. Like you have to be happy alone. And I, I'm totally validating. Like I can imagine it's hard and you're like, am I ever going to find that person? So it will come keep, you know, staying strong, focusing on yourself, having fun and being that good friend that I'm sure you're being to your friends that are having their time. But I would say just continue to go out and say yes to life. So you can hopefully meet your person some, some way, somehow sooner or versus later, but as hard and annoying as it may be, like they will come. That is such great advice just to focus on yourself and figure out what you really want. And when you're least expecting it, your person will come. And I can't sure wait a million to hear people that are. update. Yes. Send us an update. Um, but yeah, that is girls room. And I think that concludes our happy hour. That was a good one. That was, that was a good one. That was, a, <laughs> that was a lot. We really that unpacked was a lot. it all. Wow. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for listening in and spending this happy hour with us. This girls night podcast drinks on us. We are brand new to the podcasting world. So please feel free to share this podcast with your friends, family, sisters, whoever you think would love it. Please share. Feel free to give a five star review if you're loving it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yes. And (laughs) sorry, we have an inside joke there. We we can share that at a later date. (laughs) Um, But yes, we are at Drinks On Us Pod on Instagram, TikTok, and on YouTube. If you're watching the YouTube version, hi. We love hanging out with you on the video format. Um, But thank you so much for listening, watching, subscribing, sharing, reposting. It does not go unnoticed by Riley and I. And we're so thankful to get to do this with you guys. And we love reaching new people every single week. Um, But with that, we're going to do one last final cheers and toast. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week crush it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode where we really spilled the tea and cheers to us, right? Um, hopefully cheers. we don't unlock too many new wounds through <laughs> sharing all things, uh, so sharp, but we will see you guys next week. Same time, same place. I love you, Rye. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>